Hello and welcome back to the PHP 101 course. In this video, I think we're going to finish up our uh, series on the operators um, and then we'll move on to something else. Um, guys, just real quick, I uh, want to make sure that you have your servers running. So just a little reminder. And also, if you guys like the video, uh, please comment and like and uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Alright guys, well here we go. Um, we are going to do increment and decrement operators next. So let's head up here and copy our echo h3 thing just because I'm lazy. And we'll paste that in right here below increment decrement. And we're just going to call these increment decrement. And what an increment and decrement is, is it's basically incrementing something or decrementing something. And what that means is to add to it or subtract from it. Okay? And so there's only a couple of these for us to worry about. In fact, there's only four. Um, and it, it goes like this. So what we could do is we could say x is equal to four. Okay? And then what we could do is we could actually... Um, just do x plus plus okay and what will happen with x plus plus is it sets x equal to uh, 4 plus 1 okay so this is the same as saying x is equal to x plus 1 okay this is equal to this it's just a shorthand way of writing it but is called an, an increment um, operator. So what we could do after that is we can actually echo x and we'll actually um, go ahead and do our break tag here. So that's a comma break tag. So if we refresh now you see right here at the bottom we have increment decrement and this is now five um, but there's something special with these uh, because there's another one we can do and we can put the two uh, pluses before the X so this actually will return X so let me just show you what I mean here um, if I let's go down here let's do another line here just to show you what I mean. There's a lot of people miss this. So if I just, instead of doing it ahead of the echo, I could do it in line with the echo. And actually what's going to happen here is this is actually going to do, uh, it's going to show x is going to be equal to uh, 5 right here. Wait a minute, 4, 5. It's going to echo 5. Okay. So what this does is it is it returns when you do the X and then plus plus it returns X then it adds one to X and I know that's kind of it's hard to explain but let me show you so it's ret it it uh, echoed five again but if I would go down one more line after this oops sorry about that if I go down one more line and I echo X again after that X is going to be 6 on this line because what's happening is when you do X plus plus it takes X and it returns it and then it adds it so it, the way to remember it is the plus plus are after the X so that means it returns it first and then adds 1 to it so if I refresh now it should be 6 so X is actually equal to 6 after this line but when it echoes it it's only 5 Okay, now the opposite of that would be echo, and we could do plus, or I'm sorry, we can do plus plus x, and then what will happen is the, uh, it will actually add one to it and then return it. So if we get, if here it comes in by this point, x is equal to 6, okay. So let's just, just for, make it really clear in the code, x is equal to 6, and we get to this line, 
and it adds one to it and then it returns it. So it'll actually echo seven right here, okay? See, we have seven. The other way around, if we do the six and then we put the plus plus here, when we echo it, it's actually gonna echo six, but the next time we use X, it's gonna be at seven. Okay, see it went to six down here. So that's why you have this ability and it becomes really useful. You'll use this all the time, but this becomes really useful in um, loops and things like that when we get to loops. So there's two of the increment decrement uh, operators. It's just X plus plus and then plus plus X is the other one. Um, we could also do, um, let's see, let's just do copy this line and we can do a minus minus okay and this will subtract one and then return X okay so let's just keep this put a few more comments hit here so plus plus X um, will it adds one to X then returns X whereas this one returns X then adds one to it. It's the same thing here except for this one will subtract one from X then return X. So what do you guys think this will be? This will actually be it'll echo five and after this line it will still be five because it subtracts one from it and then returns it. So if we refresh we'll see a five down here, okay? Um, the other way to do this is we can do X minus minus, and this one will return X, then subtract one. And if you guys don't understand exactly how all these operators are useful yet, um, don't worry about that yet. We'll, when we get into more programming, you'll see this in action. It's just important for you to understand these the syntax and when you see this stuff in code, what it's actually doing so that you can read the code and understand the code. So this time, if x is equal to 6 and we subtract 1, when I echo this, it's going to echo it first. So it's still going to echo 6, but then it's going to subtract it. So if I, if I um, will echo... X right below that then this one will actually be 5 okay so this one will be 6 and then this one will be 5 so refresh that and see we got 6 and then we got 5 okay so the other thing that I thought we could do um, in this video so that's that is all for the increment and decrement it's basically plus and minus 1 but the order matters. If it's plus plus after, then it's going to return it, then add one. If it's plus plus before, it's going to add one and then return it. Okay? So that is increment decrement operators. The next type of operator that we have is our logical operators. And these kind of go along with our um, conditions. So let me just show you what I mean. And we only have a couple of these, so we're going to get through this. We've got four of these exactly. So logical operators allow us to do more complex stuff. And what I mean by that um, is, remember before we could say x, let's just say x is equal to true, and let's put y is equal to false or true, it doesn't matter, we just, we'll do false. And then we could check, we could say, hey, I want to um, var dump I want to var dump if x is equal to y, okay? And um, then we'll echo a break tag. Okay, so if I do this, remember we had is x equal to y? Well, in this case, true is not equal to false. We could also do this as 1. Is 1 equal 2? Nope, that's false. Is 1 equal 1? Yes, that's true. 
So th this this will actually um, do that. Okay. So the operator, the um, logical operators, allow us to do more complex stuff. So let's do three variables. Let's say x is equal to uh, one, y is equal to two, and let's do z is equal to three. Now, the first thing that we can do here is we have an operator called, um, I'm just going to do answer so you can see this out plainly, but we can do something called uh, and. And so we can do a check. We could say, I'm sorry, I'm going to do one here for z. So we, what we could do is say, uh, is x equal to y, and then you could do and, which is two ampersands, which is right above the seven, so shift seven twice. So this, what this is saying is, hey, let me know if x is equal to y, and I want to know is x equal to z. Okay. So if I var dump, um, let's see here. If I var dump answer here, this is actually going to be false. And the reason it's going to be false is because x is not equal to y. So this part of the of the equation will will evaluate to false. This one, however, x and z are equal to one another. But this and is saying, hey, I want to check both of these conditions. Is this true? And is this true? Well, in this case, it is not. So this is going to return false. So let's refresh. So we have a boolean of false. Okay. Um. Let's go ahead and copy this whole thing again. And now I'm going to show you or. And or, instead of two ampersands, is two pipes. Okay? And that is um, above your return or enter key. So you hit shift and then the key above return or enter. This means or. So I'm going to do a comment here and say this is and. And this one is or. So now. This one will actually return true because it checks and says, is x equal to y? No. Or is x equal to z? And since it's an or statement, if any one of these are true, then the whole thing is true. Okay, this one we're checking to make sure all of this is true. This side and this side. This one we're saying, hey, I, d I only care if one of these are true. Okay, that's the reason you would use an or. So we'll go ahead and refresh. And down here at the very bottom, if you can see it, um, it, it returns true because one of those it evaluates to true. The next one that we have is not. Okay. So um, let's see. What's the best way to explain this one? So if I have um, x is equal to 3 and I want to var dump... Um, Let's see. Actually, let's let, let's just make this false, okay? And I want to var dump. Uh, I want to make sure that x is false, okay? So like later, let's just say this is a variable that's set in a program somewhere, and it could be either true or false. But I want to check and see if it is indeed false. Well, if I just var dump uh, x, okay? that will come back as false. See? Down here at the bottom is false. However, if I put uh, exclamation point before it, that is saying, is this, uh, is this false? And it, this will actually be true because we're asking it, is it false? Okay, so this is not, okay? The exclamation point. If you put an exclamation point before anything, that changes it to a check to see if it is not true. So checks to see if it is false. If it's false, it returns true. And I know that sounds a little crazy, but there's a reason that you would do that, okay? So if something's false, we want something to happen. And we'll get into if statements later, but that's when you would use this a lot, all right? The next thing 
and also this could also be written as um, we could say is x equal to false so this right here is the same thing uh, and maybe I'll do a let's put this on a new line here so this is the same as saying is x equal to false so that is the same as not x okay those can be writ written both ways okay so now let's look at um, the last one which is an edge case you don't see this one very often and this is called an XOR and this one's a little harder to explain um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say X is equal to true Y is equal to true and then we're going to um, and I forgot my bar dump here so let's um, echo a bar dump or I'm sorry let's echo <laughs> A break tag. All right. So right down here, the XOR is going to look like this. You can var dump it, and an XOR. By the way, var dump all it does is you know how Echo will will print a string to the screen. A var dump actually takes a variable or some sort of data and prints that to the screen so we can see what it is. Okay, that's why we're using var dump so we can see what these values are and we can also see the type of these data structures okay so a var or an XOR you just literally type XOR so X and then you say XOR Y now what XOR does is it um, it will evaluate is this true or this true but not both of them so X can be true or y can be true but x and y cannot be true okay that's what XOR means and guys I know this is an edge case you you'll only find a couple times in your entire programming uh, that you'll need this but there are times when this can clean up a, a really long condition um, we can do an XOR like that okay so in this case, if we do um, x, x or y, and they're both true, this is going to var dump false. Okay. So if you look down here, our last one here is false. If we would do one of these, let's just say x was false, and we refresh, then this is going to be true now. See, that's true, and the reason it's true is because it's saying, hey, one of these need to be true, but both of them can't be true. And if that happens, then this returns true. If both of these are false, or if both of these are true, this thing is going to give us an answer of false here. But if one of them, and only one of them, are true, then it's going to give us a true value returned. Okay? So that is the four logical um, operators that we need. And let's see, let's go ahead and just so we can see these here, let's um, on the front end, let's replace this with logical. Logical is a, a lets us extend or check multiple conditions, if you will. So the first one is just checking um, is something uh, the first one is and, so you're checking two conditions, making sure both of them are true, uh, or is checking that e one of these are true. And by the way, if, if all of these are true on the or, it'll still return true. That's the difference between an or and an xor, okay? So both of these could be true on an or statement, and it's going to return true. Um, and then the other one is not true. So this one checks to see if something is not true. So that's the exclamation point. And the last one is XOR. Okay. So let's move on to the last one we're going to cover, which is string operators. So let's copy this here. And 
Um, this one's going to be really short, guys. There's only two of these. And this allows us to manipulate strings, okay? Remember that an operator can op do operations on a value. And so that it can also do that on a string. So I'm going to make a string. Um, we'll just call this string equals uh, hello, okay? And then what I can do, if I echo here, let's just echo string. And then let's go ahead and put a break tag. And um, that will actually just, that's just going to print hello to our string, screen, okay? And also a break tag. So if we scroll down here, we just say hello. But what we can do now is we can say string. And we can actually concatenate on to the string something else, another string. Okay? So now what we can do is let's just do um, string 2 is equal to string. And then we're going to concatenate on the word world. So this one will actually print out hello world. Okay? Oh, well, we actually got to change this echo right here to echo out string 2 instead of echoing string 1. So now you see that that one says hello world. Okay? That's because we concatenated on with this period. So a period is concatenation. Concatenation. I don't know how to spell that. Concat. I always say concat. I think it's concatenation like that. I could be wrong. All right, so uh, that is concatenation. Let me show you a different way you could do that. You could have um, two variables, and you could say string. And I'm going to make this one, well, we'll, let's, we'll do it like this. First name, and we'll say equal to Curtis. And we'll say last name is equal to Parham. All right, and then what we can do is we can echo and we can concatenate on, we can say I want to echo first name and then I'm going to concatenate on uh, a string that just has a space in it and then I'm going to concatenate on last name. Okay, and actually we can even do this where we concatenate a break tag on the end. Okay, now if I refresh that, it's going to be my first name, my a space, and then the last name, and then a break tag. So that's concatenation. You can make a long, like, string that's added. You can add many variables or strings into each other with this period. That's concatenation. The last one I want to show you is the same thing. Uh, it's still concatenation, but it also is in a concatenation assignment with a string. So what you can do is you can say string is equal to uh, Let's just say my favorite color is, we'll put a space there, and then what I can do is I am can say string, later on I can say string dot equals, okay, so instead of just doing a dot, we're going to do a dot equals, and then I'm going to uh, put a color there, so orange, all right? So then what I can do is if I echo string now, and let's just, for practice, we're going to concatenate on a break tag. So if I echo this, it should say my favorite color is orange, because what I've done is we set a string equal to a variable. Then what we've done is we've set a string, that same string, equal to that string plus this uh, concat this uh, we concatenated on orange. So this is the same as writing this. We could have wrote string is equal to string concatenate orange. Okay, this this is the same thing as this, but this is a little shorter. Okay, so now if we uh, paste that, refresh. There we go. My favorite color is orange. Okay? 
So that is logic, and that's not logical operators, that is string operators. So we forgot the, I forgot, you guys might have caught this. I forgot to change that. So if I refresh now, we can see that, okay? And I know it's not very useful to look at this. We're just kind of using this as debugging to show us what these things do. Okay, so go back and very carefully read each one of these until you understand it. Play with the values. Go through all of these different operators because we're going to be using them. And if, you're, if we don't even use all of them in this course, you will eventually see these, all of these, and use all of these in your career at some point. So it's good to know these. Um, there are others, but I think this will get us going, so we're just going to work on these. Um, also, if I want to just say something right now. I'm going to take a moment just to tell you guys that if you're a little confused at this point, and you're like, man, I don't know if I can program, I just encourage you don't give up. Um, sometimes when you're learning to a new thing like programming, I don't think programming is that hard, especially if you're a great problem solver. At least the language isn't hard. It's just big. There's a lot to learn, but it's not hard. It just takes time. But what happens when we're learning this is our brains just kind of get to a place where they're like, I don't, I can't take any more information in. And if you're to that point where you're confused now, my, my encouragement to you is to not give up. Sleep on it. Come back again tomorrow or another day. Look at this again and go through the video again and keep doing this until you do understand it. Because... There are so many times when I'm learning, even now when I'm trying to solve problems, where my brain is just done. It, it can't think anymore. It can't learn anything else. And I can't understand it. I get frustrated. I get confused. I want to give up. And then I come back later, and it just clicks for me, and it makes sense. That's going to happen a lot throughout the process of you learning the program. So don't let, if these operators, and you don't know why we use these, I know sometimes it's hard to learn something if you don't know why you're learning it. And... It's difficult to teach programming because you need to learn some basic things before you can see why you need to know them. Because if we would just jump in and start programming and you don't know why or you don't know how to do these things or what they mean, uh, that would be even more frustrating. So we're starting with the basics. Even if you don't understand why, just understand why you would use these. Just kind of try to uh, get a grasp on what they do, okay? And so I've, I've given us a lot of examples here. And I've set it up to where you guys can go through and play with each one, okay? So these are all the different um, operators. You know, it would be a good assignment for you guys to go in and put comments above these and just uh, try to explain in your own words what all these do. The other thing you can do is go to your op go to pages and go to operators.php and add some notes here about all of them. Okay, that's a good thing for you guys. Just stop. Don't move on to other videos until you understand this. And don't give up because it's not as hard as it seems right now. Trust me. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the home page here and let's just see how this looks on our front end. So I'm going to click on operators. Here's our source code. It got kind of long because we did a lot of examples here. But that's our source code. And then over here we can see um, we can see what was outputted by our echoes and var dumps. Okay. Also go ahead and paste in the vi uh, video here. Um, so at any rate, guys, I hope that helps, and I will see you guys in the next video. And I think what we're going to do in the next video, unless I change my mind, is we are going to jump into if statements, and after that we'll quickly move into switch statements, and that what we're going to do is use a lot of these operators that we learned inside of if statements, and you're going to kind of start to see why we need these. All right, guys, I hope that helps. Uh, comment, like, subscribe. I'm going to try to remember to say that just because I've been doing this for several years and I never say that because uh, it seems kind of corny to say. But it, it does help to, if I don't remember to tell you guys that, you probably have to remember to subscribe. So anyhow, guys, thank you for everything. Uh, thank you for commenting. Thank you for subscribing. Hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next video.